did that? Hot what look? Hot what look? Oh, you did good. Let's do it one more time. Hot what look? Hot what look? That means greetings to you. Welcome to my country. My grandmother taught me when I was a young adult. She told me that you never allow anyone to knock upon your door. You always go out and greet them. And the other thing she told me as I was growing up as a kid, she would say, you always get up in the morning, you face east, and you say your prayers. And you only don't say your prayers just in the morning. You walk through life. You walk through your day giving prayer, offering a prayer. So what I want to first uh, do to you, not do, but say to you, Dr. Nay, Doc Cook, Doc Schurer, Doc Burr, I welcome you to We Are Country and let it be known that my door is always open, that if you any time you're ever in Humboldt County, look me up and we can sit to the fat, as they say. So where are you all from on this side? Yeah. Santa Clara! Yeah. Fresno! Alameda County! All over California. Oh, all over California. Anybody from Humboldt County? Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> I want to hear Humboldt. Humboldt. Oh. Oh. <laughs> you guys are just, I'm happy you're here. Delmar County. Tulare. Look at that. Curry. Kern. <laughs> Thank you for standing up and let it be known that you're there from now. I was asked to come and welcome you from the from my tribe, the Weot tribe. I when I was twenty uh, when I was eighteen, I graduated from Fortuna Union High School and I made my way to San Francisco State. I'm in San Francisco, not state, San Francisco. And I came home about three years later, and I sat at my grandmother's knee for about three years, just listening to her, asking her questions about our culture, about our lifestyle, about just about anything I can think of, language, ceremony, and it was the greatest time. I encourage each one of you to do that with someone, an elder from your neighborhood. Whether it's your family member or someone down the street that you grew up with, find out where they're from. Find out who they are. Find out what they've been doing. Some of those old folks will shock you for what they have done and how they did things. It's an extremely crazy time that we live in. And when I was growing up at your age, it was just as crazy. But we're not talking about those things tonight. We're going to talk about my heritage and my culture. And the first person up on this is will be graduating from high school next year. She was about 12 when she was in this photo. We were getting ready to do a ceremony. And unfortunately, ceremonies don't come so easily to my tribe. Because in 1860, there was a massacre. Not only one massacre, but there were three. It almost annihilated my family, my Weyot people. And my mother's family came from Indian Island. That was the one that was hit hardest. My dad's family was from New River. We don't know how hard they were hit, but he's, his family survived. 
and the other one was at the mouth of the river, or mouth of um, the entrance to Humboldt Bay. It was a very sad day, February 26, 1860. We almost did not survive. But we're here. We cast a shadow today. We're vibrant. But what we left behind was our culture. We had to go underground. One of the things my mother taught me was that her father, who spoke Wiyot, or what we would call Shalele, fluently. But he would not teach his children that language because we live in a society that was not tolerant of people who did not look like that. And so he would not teach his children the language nor teach them the cultural perspectives of our tribe. So now today, over 150 years, we are trying to bring it together, bring it back. So in 1860, we lost the island. We lost the, the ability to go to that island. And as citizens of the United States of America, we can go to the capital of the United States, Washington, D.C. As citizens of California, we can all go to Sacramento without having to ask anybody for permission, correct? You can go most any place. For us to go to our sacred island, we had to ask permission. But what happened to our sacred island is that a man purchased it three days before the massacre. In the middle of our ceremony, what we call a world renewal ceremony. In that world renewal ceremony, we set the world right. Not just our little part of the world, we looked at it globally. We looked at it globally. We set the world right. So in 1860, we did not get to finish that ceremony. And that was harsh. The world has been out of kilter, off, offline, kind of say. And then it has passed hands several times, and then that they put in a dock, a um, built building ships and boats, which they use a lot of chemicals and that kind of things. And they almost nearly destroyed the top soil of the island, the 1.5 acres. And so that, that's tough, because now we have to go through this. We were around 3,000 plus people strong in my tribe. By 1900, the census of 1900, we had nearly 100 full blood we have people left. That's pretty harsh when you think about we had 3,000. And then there's tribes who are no longer in existence. And that's even worse. But in that, we still go forward. And that's what I ask you all to do. When something gets you down, something is heart wrenching. Don't stop. Go forward. And if you have to grab a hand to help you go forward, don't hesitate. You are here together to make alliances throughout the state of California. And we no longer just live in our little pieces. We are global citizens. So you are our, our future. You're going to be there to take us to that next journey. In that next journey, we have 
come to a realization that we need a ceremony because our ceremony never got finished. But we couldn't have a ceremony on the islands because the island was polluted. It was pretty bad. It took over two million dollars of the super fund for hazardous waste to come in and clean it up. It took us 14 years, private funding, a lot of, you know what Indian pockets are? No. No? Yes? There are a piece of bread, fried bread, it's about this thick, about this big, and you know what a tostada is? Mm -hmm. It looks like a tostada, but on steroids. It's a big <laughs> piece of Indian bread. We did pie sales, taco sales, anything we could do to purchase 1.5 acres. And in that 1.5 acres was the master, master site itself. And so here we go. In August 2013, we got a clean bill of health that we could have a dance. And on that dance, we started with these young women and young men to complete our dance of setting the world right. And so we did. It was fabulous. Hundreds of people, Indians and non-Indians alike, came and was a part of the healing process of our, our people. And we were, we'll do another one here pretty soon, probably in another year or two. And you are all welcome to come. No one has ever turned away. So we came up to 20, 2000, 2000 when we purchased the 1.5 acres. And then we started on that 13 year, uh, 14 year march to get things done. And I started on it. I'm used to giving a lecture for an hour and a half, so I'm going to wrap this up here. Because you guys are looking to have fun and not just listen to me. But this young woman is looking for colleges next year. I am assuming that you are all looking for different colleges to go to in the next few years, right? Mm -hmm. Taking it, yes. 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 <laughs> okay. This is some of our ceremonies. This is called a brush dance. And the two men, the young boy and the gentleman, is they go out and they call jump center. And you see how low they get? He's not very low. Usually they get really low. I have I need a, uh, a young man. Any young man? Oh, I got one back here. He's basically. Get way down. Yes. And, and you've got to jump. Just jump. It's hard. Up. And you see how? That's my tribal chairman. Don't tell him that. Gosh. He gets low, and I don't know how he does that on his knees. But he does that. You keep going. And so you see that little that little boy there? He's challenging him. He's challenging him, going, I'm a better dancer than you are. <laughs> My knees are not going to do this very well. He gets down, and I'm a better dancer. And he gets up to his face, and they're singing. And they're, there's all the men behind them are singing. And they're going like this, and they're doing Ow! Ow! Can you do that? Ow! <laughs> and then they get all the way down to one part, then they jump high center. <laughs> I'm afraid to do that, I'll pull on my head. Okay. They go up like this. Yeah, it's cute. You're, you're bouncing on one foot. <laughs> Is that easy? I know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a hard dance. 
when they this and this dance is for healing we dance for the healing of a child the songs are sung to heal a child and so all of our dances are for a purpose and for a reason it's not just that we go out you guys go out and boogie oogie right <laughs> we our purpose is to make things well make things better thank you so the young men are learning how to flint map and again that's our chairman up there in the red shirt and this is not a woman's job this is for men the other thing is that when you're making arrowheads arrowheads are not to be played with arrowheads are not to be put up on the wall or in those big glass cases my grandfather says arrowheads are meant for killing. Not meaning killing people, but they're killing for food. And it's not to be played with. And you find an arrowhead, you thank the creator, God or God with, and you put it back down, and you put a little dirt over it or a little sand, and you leave it be. Because grandpa used to say, they journey. They're on a journey. And if you take them home, they don't complete their journey. They need to be left in the ground. And so this is what they're working on. There is a thing called stick cakes. Oh, you thought that little dance demonstration was easy. <laughs> the stick cakes, if you learn how to wrestle, and you need to learn to have endurance. And you've got to run two, three, four, five miles a day all summer long in order to play stick games because you've got to be fit. A chunky person like me would never make it. And that's for guys. Gambling. There is another game called card games, which you don't use a deck of cards. It's a different kind. But this is women's gambling. And the girls made those pieces um, those are abalone, and there's a song. Everything has a song. Stick game, you have a song. Card games, there's a song, and there's a song. And what we tell people is that you need to fast, you need to have your hair clear, and songs will come to you. And so I wasn't a part of this one, so I don't know how they... Uh, made this, but the young girls did that and they were excited. This is redwood logs, and the redwood logs are these are balls, and this is a big ball, and he's got a big sledgehammer, and he's splitting those. And in that, we make our redwood houses, and they have been working on that for a while. And every young boy, young lad, helps. Everybody gets a part. Everyone. No one just sits back and wants it. That is really difficult. Are you probably won't be going sightseeing in Humboldt County, but if you ever get an opportunity to go to Trinidad up at Patrick's Point, there is a house, a redwood slab house, that is made from wood like that and that they all hand did it. No mills, no nothing like that. It's all hand done. That is salmon. This is at Weot Days, which is coming up in September. And we get salmon and we cook it. We use alder, alder wood, these sticks, are all redwood and they all have to be fixed and clean and salmon goes on each of those sticks and the wood goes in between that and the fisher the fish the cook he walks around and he twists those sticks every quarter every quarter turn so by the time they're almost done oh they're yummy very good. It's my favorite food in the world is salmon. I can eat salmon breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 
and those kind of things, and we feed everybody. It's all for free. And you come. These guys are the cooks and the cook helpers, some of the fishermen, all there to do that. And we are just happy to celebrate and have you join us. This is one of my favorite food. This is gota. The fat salmon is gota. Gota. This is gota. Gota is eel. Has anyone had eel before? No. Oh, look at those beautiful hands. <coughs> eel is my favorite food. I can have eel breakfast like a dinner. <laughs> the boys, all the boys, and you see this, that's their eel hook. One of the gentlemen, I think, was this, this guy here. He got all the boys together in the neighborhood who wanted to be there. We don't drag them kicking and screaming. You've got to be there, and you want to be there. Just like you want to be here. That's how you learn, because you want to learn, you want to be there. They taught them how to make eel hooks. Each eel hook is different. They design it to what they like, what they like to see on them. Um, there's some Yurok eel hooks that are just phenomenal that need to be in a museum. They're so beautiful. These guys are waiting. This is at the mouth of the river. And those waves come in, and there are eels coming in the waves, and you just hook them. And you swing them around your head, and then you take them off. And the kids, one of my duties when I was a child was digging a big hole. And they would come in and put the eels in the hole. And then they would clean them, and then we'd roast them over the fire. That's the best way. This is, um, this is a brush dance. This is a, a brush dance. And what we did is that we did it for the elders. As I said earlier, brush dance is for healing of a child. We decided that we would want to put our elders forward. They are our lifeline to the past, as you are my lifeline to the future. So all these dresses, these dresses take about five years to collect all the goods to make a dress. We can go out to the store, to the fabric shop, buy some t-shirt fabric, buy some pants fabric, and we can whip it out in a day. It takes them, as I said, about four to five years to gather all the material. You see the basket caps these young women are wearing. Those basket caps take a year to gather all the material. It takes probably about four months, probably less if you're working on them constantly, to weed. And all of those things is what we do. These dresses are borrowed dresses because we have almost no dresses left. But we had at our dance in 2014, our World Renewal Ceremony in 2014, every dress that came out to dance was ours. We had made, and took, took us some years and a lot of evenings putting them together, but we had at least eight Weop dresses. That's a first. We even had one dress in captivity. When I say captivity, I mean that they're in museums. Come out from Washington, D.C., the Native American Museum, brought out our dress and we got to dance it. And that dress was over 100 years old. And we got to dance it. And it was fabulous. This is a quiver made out of otter pelt, abalone. And they hold it in front of them. The men hold it in front of them, put the arrows in. And again, this is for our brush dances. Before we had our World Renewal Ceremony, we had a ceremony, so to speak. Called the Candlelight Vigil. 
memory, remembering all those people in 1860 who had perished and did not have an opportunity to come forward. And so every year we would come and we would remember them. We stopped in February 2014 because now we can do our world renewal ceremony on our island. So after all these years, we got to stop and do our ceremonies. That's us. We're kind of cheesy. <laughs> this is our chairman, myself, a councilman, councilwoman, councilwoman, and the councilman. We went to Humboldt, uh, we went to Sacramento State, I mean, I'm sorry, capital of Sacramento, and we were given this document saying how good we were that we had come back from the brink, and here we are, we made it, and we were uh, served this, we were given this in the uh, assembly room in the capital. That was it. Do you have any questions? Because my time is up. Yes, way back there. They're made out of hide, mostly elk or deer, and they put shells and bear grass and leather. You mentioned the island. Where exactly is this located? Island is right out here in the bay. And it's the largest island. You also said it was 1.5 acres. How did you get so many people to sit on 1.5 acres? <laughs> no, we purchased 1.5 acres. Oh. Okay. Sorry about that. The, the island is 275 acres. Wow. We purchased 1.5 acres. And this is what I want you to do, young people. Never let anybody tell you you can't do something. Those were words that I was told often. This little Indian kid, you can't do that. You can't do that. I can't too if I want to. And so when the new mayor of Eureka got elected, I gave him three months to get, the, get his feet wet in the politics of the city. So three months down the road, I called him up. Mayor, this is Cheryl. Hi. I want the island back that the city of Eureka owns. And um, 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 well, I, we, we can try to work that out. And I said, OK, give me a call back. Waited three months later. Patience. And he called, I, he didn't call me back, so I called him. Mayor, you said you were going to call me. I will call you. I, I, you're on the top of my list. So, okay, I got it. So we did. We negotiated. They gave us over 40 acres of Indian Island. And so now we own all of the north part of the island. And last year, we started negotiation of the rest of the island that the city of Eureka owns. But when I went before the, when I went before the city council, I said, we're here, the Wiat tribe is here. On behalf of the Wiat tribe, I would like to let you know that we're asking for all city property. <laughs> and I, you never saw very stern faces like, what did she just say? And I had to apologize, I meant on the island. <laughs> <laughs> they thought sure the We Out Tribe was going to come in and take over at City Hall. But anyway, that, that's part. Any other questions? Yes? What are the basket caps made out of? The basket caps are made out of several different things. Uh, the ribs of the cap yeah, are can be made out of uh, hazel, gray willow, the weaving, the twining as they're called. Um, willow root, and the overlay can be um, bear grass, other overlay can be spruce root. Spruce root can be dyed, dyed by alder bark. The black, you see, oh, I can't see that. Okay. 
some of the black design is made in here, and in my basket cap, it's rush free. You said it takes about five years to make one of those dresses. What happens, what happens if it gets caught in the chair? And you don't sit down. No, no sitting. Our young women stand. And when they stand, when we're dancing, only the young women can dance. Uh, us old, old gals don't get to dance. But they're up on their toes all the time. So when they're singing, they're up on their toes all the time. Kind of like good cat horses. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Well, you notice I use some of the words. Um, we don't have. We do have a language on file. She is not Ria. She is not native. But boy, she can speak some good Ria. <laughs> um, my grandfather spoke fluent Ria, but we called it high Ria more formal, like you have Castile, uh, Castile which is uh, Castilian, which is high, uh, which is real well, formal, then you've got everyday Spanish. That's the same thing. We have high and everyday. And he just decided not to teach his children because he knew how it felt to go to school and be beaten over the head with the ruler for speaking his language. It was, it was tough. So we're learning, slowly, we're learning. Somebody had a question? Yes. What's the historical significance behind the line? That's the center of our world. That's where we come from. Anything else? You guys? Yeah. Um, when you said coming over about your elders and um, the people that come into the world here, is that like cultural context? Um, has, does that have a certain meaning to it that it more, does that mean like honored or something else? I didn't get the gist of your question. Um, when you said come home, you said you held a vigil for all the people that from the massacre that did not get to come over, and you held a dance for all the elders so that they could come over. What okay. exactly? I, I mean, I'm sorry to have confused you. The candlelight vigil are for honoring those who have died in the, in the massacre. And what I was trying to get at is that we now try to uh, bring us forward. Let's not get stuck back in the massacre. The people who live today did not cause the massacre. That's how my mother and father explained it to me. So the people that you go to school with today didn't cause that. You treat these people properly. And you know, you treat them with kindness. You treat them with respect. That's how I was taught. You know, and um, coming over is meaning that we're sending them on their final journey, which they have had already, but now we're doing it more formally. Okay? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think I was just told here a couple of weeks ago, about three weeks ago, we had 600, nearly 650, 660. Yeah, we're getting there, slowly. Not by me. I never got married, never had any children. <laughs> so I'll just adopt you guys. <laughs> okay, I want to leave you, because I know you're on a tight schedule. I want to leave you with a song. And uh, I'm going to ask you to stand. You've been sitting for half an hour. You want to, want to get down and move. When you sing this song, I'm, I'm going to sing the song, and you guys can join me if you'd like. It's a pretty uh, easy song. But I want you to, when you think about it, is center yourself, ground yourself. I usually make people take off their shoes, but there's so many in here, we might not find their shoes again. <laughs> so, um, ground yourself into the ground. Know where you're from. Never let anyone tell you that you're not from here. You may not have been born here. You may have come from a different country. 
but once you're here, you're with us. Okay. I will sing a couple of rounds, and if you would like to join in, you're very welcome to do so. The song is uh, Coming Home, Coming Home song. And I was going home when this song came to me in the year February 2000. I asked the creative, creative, please give me a song. The We Are People have not had a song, a new song for years, decades, maybe a hundred years, who knows. And so this song came to me. Nahi, nahi, no. 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 Eh, 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 Nahi, nahi, no. Nahi, nahi, no. Nahi, nahi, no. Nahi, nahi, no. Eh, no. Eh, hey, hey, Cheryl, thank you so much for sharing you know, your heritage with us, a lesson, and listening to and respecting your elders and those that can teach you things. And a uh, 154-year lesson in perseverance, it sounds like. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, so we have a gift for you. Some country songs, a lot of country singers are for ages or in the past. So thank you very much. I, I did I was a little bit for age at one time. I made a skirt. <laughs> up your MCs for the remainder of the evening. Please welcome Steven Johnson and Brennan Rand. started here. So as the youth leaders of the California 4-H program, we would like to take a few minutes to talk about the standards of conduct for SLC. We are all the representatives of the 4-H program. How the Humboldt University staff, the local community, and other guests of the campus view 4-H is up to us. Please remember this, please remember this as you are having fun here at SLC. If you would like to read along with me in your conference agendas, I will be reading from the section titled Delegate Expectations.
Okay. The state leadership um, conference staff wants you to have the best possible experience at the conference. Much of your experience at the conference depends on you. Let's keep everyone safe physically, emotionally, and culturally. Please abide by these simple guidelines. Number one, my actions and attitude will reflect positively on my club, my county, and myself. Number two, I understand that the rules of conference are designed for the well-being of all, and all abide by them. Number three, if I see someone breaking the rules of the conference or the 4-H code of conduct, I will report it. If I do not report it, I know that I am now breaking the code of conduct of myself. Number four, I commit to being an active participant in all activities. Number five, I understand that I can only get out of the conference what I put into it, and I commit to make the most of my opportunities. Number six, I will meet friends, new and old, learn the new things that will help me be a better leader and role model in my community, and I will have a good time. And a few more reminders. When you're moving throughout campus, you must travel with at least one other person, and preferably in groups of three or more. Ask your roommates or groupmates for help if you need a buddy. Help keep each other safe. If you see someone without a buddy, be that buddy. It's 4-H. We're making new friends. So please follow your schedule and be in your sessions when you're supposed to be. The same goes for being, um, being quiet and in your dorms at curfew, which will be around 10 p.m. each night. Only in an emergency should you ever be outside your dorm at night, and this is only the direction of an adult. There is sports security room in the dorm areas during the night, and if you are outside after curfew, the consequences will not be pretty. We also want to make sure you are comfy at the conference during your activities. Being appropriately dressed for the situation will help you. If you have any questions about what you should be wearing at any given point, these guidelines can be found on the 4-H website. You can also get additional blankets from the conference center, desk, second floor of the Jolly Greener. Thank you all for listening, and if you have any questions about dress guidelines or delegate expectations, you can ask your PA. So make sure to follow these guidelines and have fun. I'd like to recognize several groups of people that have made this conference reality. The first group is the conference planning team. When I call your name, please stand and give away if you are pre uh, present. Jenna Colburn, conference director. <laughs> Jenna Minor, academic advisor. Grace Tobias and Ryan Cleland, Assistant Conference Directors. Sarah Lloyd, the Program Assistant Coordinator. From our Making, Making It Meaningful team, which is responsible for education assemblies, Nikki Shunty, Jen Hankins, Lisa Tobias, Caitlin Sutherland, and Maeve Keegan. From the Make It Happen team, which is responsible for logistics, Lori Birkin, Robbie Hankins, Devaney Kelly, and Jordan Miner. Uh, from the Make It Fun team, which is responsible for recreation, Cole Breck and Bobby, Dream, Bobby Jean Birkin. From the Make It Safe team, Christina Valencia and Rob Hankins, our medical staff, Sandy Sathrum, and Sandy Sathrum. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Andy Beck, the women's and men's deans, and Scott Mel. The, is the chaperone advisor.
Let's also take a moment to recognize the program assistants. Please stand and take a bow. All the <laughs> Chaperone. Let's thank our chaperones for helping to keep it safe and providing guidance and support for the SOC conference. Chaperones, will you please stand? And if you're on the support group, would you please stand as well? All those people running around getting stuff done are the support group. But the support group is playing a Pay it forward game. So look for someone to hand you a card with a pay it forward challenge. And then once you complete the challenge, be sure to pass that card on to someone else. Keep the game going all throughout the conference. Woo! No conference can happen without the technological experts giving us lights, sound, and overall technological support. Will the members of the California 4-H Educational Technological Advisory Committee please stand? Ashley, are you don't keep flying? Connor Lighty and David McCormick oh, and Curtis Olin. Let's give them a hand in <laughs> And we're pointing out members from the Texas Technology Leadership Team partnered with our tech team. Please say howdy to the Texas Tech Team. <laughs> and finally, let's welcome our friends from the Great White North. Let's give it up for Sarah Jackson and David McTaggart. Hello, <laughs> 4-H International Exchange Program from Canada. Now I'd like to welcome Lyle Glass to introduce the 2015-2016 State Ambassadors. Lyle! Everybody, I'm Lyle Glass, and it has been my pleasure to serve as a state ambassador for two years. The other state ambassador, too, is Marin Spangler, who sadly could not be with us this weekend. In addition to Stephen and Brennan, who you guys have already met this evening, please join me in welcoming the first year state ambassadors to the stage Ashley Olson, <laughs> Brianne Sanchez. Katie Taylor, Laurel Nelson, and Trent Baldwin. One more. <laughs> Let's give one more round of applause. <laughs> Each year, the state ambassadors choose a platform to focus our plan of work on. We're going to share. Uh, we're going to share with you what we've been doing all year. Hi, everybody. What do you think of when you think of healthy living? Eating right, exercising. I saw a water bottle out there. <laughs> when the team first met, we brainstormed many options, and one of those was emphasizing mental health since it was rarely talked about in 4-H. The team unanimously agreed healthy living would be, a, would be an educational topic that wasn't talked enough about. We have had tons of opportunities that either presented themselves or that we created to help us advance our platform. For example, we advocated through Talk Text Act, through our Talk Text Act event, which Brianne will talk more about in a minute, and you'll all experience on S at SLC on Saturday. We learned how many people really suffer with mental illnesses and how personal this topic could be. I personally learned how important mental health is when I began to have anxiety my senior year and decided to educate others about mental health for our stress management session. Every member of our team has played a role in every single event by promoting it, executing it, and finding what they personally were passionate about concerning health or educating 4-H members.
Early on in the year, Jack and I took a life-changing trip to the Great White North, Canada, to participate in the Alberta Club Week program. This trip was the start of something amazing, and that amazing thing was our platform. One of the main focuses on the conference was social emotional health. We were put into sun groups, which are small, predetermined groups, and within these groups, we were able to form deep connections with those around us and identify our authentic selves. The emotional impact from these people is what inspired a large portion of our program. This past February, Wall, Katie, and I traveled to Chevy Chase, Maryland, where the National Voyage Center is, to present and participate in the National Voyage Healthy Living Summit. To our surprise, Chevy Chase had a snowstorm while we were there, so we got experience the true East Coast winter. We start out to achieve our goal of spreading our healthy living platform at the national level because we believe that stress is a problem that plagues the majority of American youth. The summit attracted a captive audience that was interested in promoting a healthy lifestyle in their own voyage community. We presented our stress management workshop to three completely full sessions with delegate groups from all over the country. We created an ongoing dialogue about the causes and symptoms of stress and stress relieving techniques. In the process of presenting at the summit, we got to meet a diverse group of youth making friends from Illinois, Georgia, Tennessee, Delaware, and Ohio. As an example, this is one activity that was part of our presentation. We are presenting the full session tomorrow during the educational workshops. So this gift here um, basically demonstrates the proper technique for uh, breathing, a breath that is also very, like that helps relieve stress. So how this works is when you breathe in and it expands, it should last for four seconds and when it collapses, um, you should breathe for eight seconds. So let's all try it together on the next cycle. <laughs> Thanks for trying that out with us. A critical part of our social emotional health platform was our focus on the Text Talk Act. We each gathered groups within our community to join in on a nationwide conversation about mental health and home health care. We also promoted the event through the California Forage community to participate. After sending a keyword and a code through text message, each group received discussion questions that led them through a conversation about relevant mental health issues. We entered California Forage as a competitor nationwide, and since we had the most people join, we were declared the winners. So not only did we raise awareness for our platform, we were also awarded a thousand dollars. In addition to our platform about social and emotional health, our team wanted to contribute to California Focus. As a part of helping put this conference together, we created three workshops to present at the conference to reflect civic engagement, which is one of the four main focus areas that comprise citizenship. These included activism, youth voice, and deliberative decision-making, which you have the opportunity to attend at this SLC's workshop sessions. We hope to see you there tomorrow. For the culmination of our platform on social emotional health, we decided to host a health fair at this year's State Leadership Conference. The All for Health Fair has three main parts. One, fun exercise sessions that help your mind and body, such as yoga, Zumba, and meditation. Two, stress-relieving crafts, like making stress balls and crayon art. And lastly, an expo hall full of fun and educational booths and displays on all aspects of public life. We've been planning this event for several months, and we hope that all of you will learn more about how to keep yourself healthy, both physically, but more importantly, mentally and emotionally. And above all, we hope you all have fun. Uh, we have a wellness challenge you can through this year. On your chairs are activities to complete throughout the weekend. Even if you don't want to complete the challenge, please take a look at the items. 
and try to accomplish something that's a healthy collegiate. On Sunday, the first 50 people to turn the day at closing assembly will receive a gift card for Jamba Juice. SLC has our very own Snapchat filters this year, so feel free to load up your stories and pictures and videos of all your exciting adventures here at SLC 2016, and follow our State Ambassador Team Snapchat account at CA4HSA and CA4HSLC. So we can stay up on all this on all your leadership endeavors here and at the conference. The Snapchat filters are available at various times and locations throughout the conference, so look for it and have fun using it. So, uh, we have some announcements for Saturday. First, our tech team is having an Instagram photo challenge. So take your best mascot group photo and use the hashtag SLC16. And please, uh, always, we want to remind you to always wear your name tags at all times. And Okay, we're going to dismiss you by your mascot groups. So when I call your group, find your PA group. And uh, they should be outside the door. So first is the, hold on, don't keep on the piece. Sorry. So, if you are a, if your mascot is the bear, you can be dismissed. Find your PA group. 